Hello and welcome to the National Car Club Awards 2021. My name's Danny Hopkins, I'm editor of Practical Classics, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this very different award ceremony. Now the awards this year are supported by Practical Classics magazine, Classic Car Weekly, and the Federation of British Historic Vehicle Clubs. And the National Car Club Awards, as ever, celebrate, recognize, and honor the achievements of the nation's car clubs the enthusiastic people who run them and the remarkable cars they preserve and cherish. Circumstances are different this year, but we're not gonna let this year pass without marking the extraordinary efforts and the achievements that the clubs have made during lockdown. Now the judges, that's myself, David Whale, FBHVC chairman, and David Simister, editor of Classic Car Weekly, selected the award winners from club activities that we've seen and interacted with throughout our respective roles this year. And the many interactions that we've had with clubs and their members throughout the year have informed our decision-making process. So keep watching to find out who we selected to win the judges special recognition awards for best club contribution to charity, best club online initiative, Outstanding Lockdown Restoration and Outstanding Club Magazine of the Year. Now, this year, we are also presenting one other special award for your Lockdown Hero. And we asked the Classic Car community to nominate a club member who'd gone way above and beyond to help others during lockdown. And so finally, today, we will be honoring its very worthy recipient. So thanks for being here. Thanks for celebrating our community with us and let's get on with the first award. Right then, without further ado, let's get on with it. Our first award this evening is for the best club contribution to charity. Our special mention must be given to the Renault Owners Club and Lancaster Insurance for the sale of the Super Sank uh, in aid of Alzheimer's Society and to the TR Register for the Triumph Over COVID-19 Rally Plate Appeal, which raised £7,000 for NHS charities. But the winner this evening is for the rescue of a scrappage destined 400,000 mile Rover 216 and its subsequent sale to raise money for Muscular Dystrophy UK. It's an amazing effort all round, especially during a pandemic. And it's an effort from a young club in all senses it doesn't have a lot of resources, they acted fast to save a car, and it's an impressive feat, even in normal circumstances, to have done it this year is extraordinary. And it reflects everything that's good about our community. It's preservation and restoration. It's collaboration and working together. There's a lot of online activity involved in it as well. And of course, at the end of it, it raise, raises money for an amazing cause. So without further ado, I would like to announce the winner of the National Car Club Awards 2021 Best Club Contribution to Charity. The winner is the Rover 200 and 400 Owners Club and here to collect the award is John Batchelor. Just quickly tell us, how did you first hear about this car that was destined for the scrap heap? Well, it first appeared on um, social media feeds, I think I saw it on Facebook, um, and it was um, obviously causing a bit of a rumpus that a uh, a unique car, 400,000 mile car, was about to be scrapped. Um, so pretty quickly um, that morning, I got in touch with the Mazda dealer. It was uh, Beechwood Mazda uh, in Derby. Um, spoke to Rob Wood, the, the MD there, and very quickly was offered the car, um, which was a bit of a surprise. It happened that quickly. Um, but we we talked to the guys um, over there and they, they were very keen to, to not um, scrap a car that, that was obviously uh, unique. Um, so we were able to take it off the hands. About a week later, I think we went up to pick the car up. Um, was surprised by uh, its condition and just how well it ran. Yeah. <laughs> and drove it 60 miles home um, to then decide what to do next. But we discussed with them um, about a charity auction and Robert put forward the Muscular Industry for UK. So that's where, where we went. So in the end, uh, who did it end up with? Of course, you, you actually took it to a show as well, one of the few shows. That we yes, yeah, we, we managed to get it to the um, the um, is it BMC Day? No, it's uh, British Leyland Day, that's right, Milton Keynes. Um, that was one of the few that happened. Um, Tom Morley's show, which is great. Uh, we took it there. It just happened to fit in the, the time window of having the car. 
So it was nice to be able to drive it down there and back. And it, it ran, again, faultlessly. Um, but then, the, yeah, the charity auction ran, ran for a couple of weeks online. We had several bids for it. And the winning bid was actually a club member, a um, guy from um, Kent. Uh, and a few weeks after that, I then delivered the car down to him um, in Kent and got the train back home again. Um, and he, he, was, he was very chuffed with it. I bet he was. It's an absolutely fantastic story. And it just sums up the spirit of the year for people who've been engaged in this fantastic uh, pastime of ours. John, I've really got to um, do the honours now, I'm afraid. So uh, if you're ready, I'm going to pass. I'm ready. It's here in its box. I'm just going to pass it through like that. There you go. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you so much uh, for joining us online today. And uh, well done to the Rover 200 and 400 Owners Club, worthy winners of the best club contribution to charity. Okay, so now we're on to the second award this evening, and this is the award for the best club online initiative. Now, before we get to the winner, I need to give a special mention uh, to the impressive podcast series and the amazing online efforts that were made during lockdown by both the MG Car Club and the Jaguar Enthusiast Club. Both have gone to monumental lengths to keep their club members engaged and entertained during these incredibly difficult times. Well done to both of them. But the winner uh, this year in 2021 National Car Club Awards uh, is for the, a club which has expanded its presence and its offerings on the website and through social media, reaching out to members during the lockdown like it's never done before. And we were really, really impressed and wanted to recognise the efforts of a more traditional club, which has stepped right outside of its comfort zones and made new efforts to engage with its members online. So the 2021 Best Club Online Initiative Award goes to the Sunbeam Talbot Alpine Register. And here to accept the award is Chairman Alan Brinklow and website and PR guru, John Donegan. Good evening, chaps. Good evening. Good evening. How are you both? Very Fine, well. thank you very much. Very Excellent. excited. Oh, it was great. Well, it's, it's a wonderful <laughs> award to win, I think. And tell, tell us, Alan, when, when uh, the lockdown hit, what, what, what was the first thoughts? Because you, you started meeting online straight away, didn't you, almost? Well, virtually online, because uh, I think we realised that we were going to be in for a, pretty much a long haul for a while. But, of course, um, um, 12 months now on is probably a lot further than we thought at the time. Yeah. But um, uh, one of the initiatives was was to try and engage members in keeping their interests going by using the online facilities. And of course, we invested in a, a new website a couple of years ago um, and uh, we've got an expanding Facebook page. Um, and uh, the, the likes of uh, John Donegan um, was, 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 was the target man for us to, to, for him to get involved, which he did on a sterling basis. The um, target well, man, the tar I like that, John. So John, you've been at the coalface uh, making this all happen. What was the uh, what was the first thing you did? How did you start building this this online presence and this engagement? Well, I knew we were in a good position because we had a new website and we had a uh, Facebook page. So the first thing I decided to do was that I would do a daily post on our Facebook page and I would try and engage members with something interesting and different, a number of different themes. And I did that for 100 days continuously from the 23rd of March to the 1st of July. And that generated a lot of likes, a lot of comments. And we increased our Facebook group by over 50% across those 100 days. So we were really pleased about that. And then we expanded the website with period and contemporary periodicals, so all the classic car magazines. So we've now got over 100 magazines in a booklet form, which you can view on the internet. Brilliant. So I think that would exhaust anybody through lockdown. And uh, we've, we've managed to... <laughs> We've managed to increase our, um, our contacts on the website, our visitors on the website dramatically. And we're now getting uh, a lot of visitors, over 200 a month. And it's particularly uh, good for overseas members 
because they've got very little face-to-face -face contact with the club based in the UK. And they've really taken to both the website and the Facebook group disproportionately to UK members, which has been really, uh, really good. Interesting. Yeah, fantastic, John. That's such a great, that's a fabulous story and just a, a brilliant example of how if, you, if, if the necessity is there, you can really make things happen. So thank you very uh, much indeed. Can I uh, just... Uh, Danny, can I just, can I just mention that uh, um, obviously my personal thanks for John because he's put us in a really good position. But um, I, as, as part of the, uh, the exercise as well, the, the membership numbers that we've had has increased over the last 12 months. And we are now on a record high of over 720 worldwide. In fact, our last members just uh, joined in from Hawaii, which is uh, marvellous, on a vehicle that we haven't heard of before. So that's it fantastic. Just shows the amazing, it just shows the amazing reach you can get if you do this. Right. Absolutely. And that's why Absolutely. you're getting this award today. Alan, um, yes. I've got the award here in the box, uh, and I'd like to pass it through to you as chairman of the club. Uh, Alan and John and everybody from the Sunbeam Talbot Alpine Register, congratulations, you are the winner. Thank you very, very much, Danny. And I'm really excited to receive this on behalf of the Sunbeam Talbot Alpine Register. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you to the judges. Uh, now, two outstanding restorations must be mentioned before we get to the winner, and they've been completed in the last 12 months. Fabienne Steele's Lotus Esprit, a Bond replica, was completed after he was furloughed as a British Airways pilot. And it is the most perfect recreation of a Bond car that I've ever seen. And it went straight on the cover of Practical Classics magazine, and we featured it in the magazine. It was an absolutely brilliant job. But most importantly, it was done by a man whose obsession extended beyond his job and into a, a time when he was furloughed and he made sure that restoration was completed perfectly. He kept himself busy. And the other mention goes to Tom McCooey for his restoration of his father's MG Magnet. That was documented in Classic Car Weekly over the last 12 months. Quite an extraordinary achievement and again, achieved all under lockdown, like so many restorations have been. However, the winner of the outstanding lockdown restoration is something really, really special. It's a club-wide collaboration, and it's for the restoration of the last Morris Minor Saloon off the production line at Cowley, just in time for that 50th anniversary. It was found in a derelict condition, and the club decided to restore it for the anniversary. And they were determined not to let the pandemic get in the way of that. And in fact, when, once it was restored, they took it back to Cowley with only minutes to spare before lockdown two came into force in order to photograph it at the site where it was completed. The club worked together to put in place strict COVID protocols that meant the team of 10, including some in a high risk category, could finish the job off to an exceptional level, but in complete safety. So this year, the National Car Club Awards 2021 Outstanding Lockdown Restoration goes to the Morris Minor Owners Club. And I'm joined here by director Andrew Stone, and Secretary and Director Ray Newell. Good evening, chaps. Good evening, Danny. Hi. Now, this is an amazing achievement and an extraordinary car. Um, when did you decide to, to press go on the project? Andrew. Oh, Andrew was Sorry. responsible. <laughs> Andrew was responsible for Andrew's locating the, cold, the car. Okay, so tell us, Andrew, when did you press go? So I think um, when the car was bought, one of the members rang me and said that he'd got the car. He was very, very, very confused and that basically he wanted, people had offered him um, some money, but they wanted to reshell the car. And you couldn't let a car like that go. Um, so we came to an arrangement with John Ashmore, bought the car back in-house. Um, I think, as Ray said in, in the club magazine this month, a lot of work went into just stabilising the car. Um, its previous owner had bought it. Uh, I don't think it'd be able to use it. And the garage it was stored in had collapsed, causing a lot of water damage. Mm. Um, and from there, we'd sort of worked through with one of the guys who did a lot of the welding, um, Mark, Mark Boothman. And then um, the car went off to SPL to be dipped, um, brought back even more welding. Um, bits of other cars were welded into it to bring it back to that state. 
And then I think really, as, as COVID struck in different ways, people had to think very differently. But again, very fortunately, COVID won, the car was at the paint shop. So effectively it was sprayed and then locked away in a nice safe environment um, till the end of COVID. Then we caught, recovered the car from there, came back up to the workshop as, as, um, as Matt, Matt Tompkins has got photographs to show of all the various members working on the car. Yeah. Um, and then as you say, um, Danny, a really, really big team effort in that lots of people working different shifts in a COVID safe way with masks and gloves and all the other things that are very alien to people. Um, and I think your summary at the end there, actually getting the car down and talking to the guys at BMW who couldn't have been more helpful actually um, yeah. in making that happen. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. And I'll, I'll pass over to Ray because I'm sure he's got a few things he'd like to add. Well, I, wanna, I just want to ask, ask Ray that yeah, this is the sort of thing that the Morris Minor Owners Club is actually famous for, isn't it? Because you've got people from all backgrounds, all ages, lots of youngsters involved, making sure that this car could live again. I mean, it's, it's part of the DNA of the club, isn't it? Indeed. Um, we were very fortunate in that um, we have a, a wide spectrum of, of um, ages represented in the club, as you say, um, and we were able to engage with a, a broad cross-section of them to get them involved in doing the, uh, the work on the car. Um, we had um, some um, experienced, very experienced, <laughs> more elderly uh, gentlemen who worked with the, the car at the workshop, refurbishing parts and getting things going. Um, and then towards the end, we involved the young members, um, Tom Morris in particular, and uh, Matt Tompkins, of course, uh, who came along and did a lot of the final detailing. So yes, a broad cross-section of people were involved in the restoration. And I imagine it's become something of a talismanic project in a, in a, in a tough time for everybody. Indeed it was, but um, the ent enthusiasm um, won through in the end. Um, and um, we mentioned about the getting the car down to Cowley. We really did have to put the, uh, a real spurt on to get the car ready, to actually get it there. We were very fortunate in that the staff at BMW Mini were very accommodating to us. And they've actually kept the car down there as part of their heritage collection after it was after um, it was delivered there. Right, really good. Well, look, Ray, uh, the Morris Minor Owners Club are worthy winners, and I believe uh, I think it's you I think who should receive the award as the elder statesman here, sir. So I've got your uh, I've got your award here in its box, and I'm just going to pass it out to you if you want to take it from me. There yeah, indeed. Perfect. Thank Perfect. you, Danny. That's all right. Congratulations. Lovely. To... Um, I'll just open this up and um, <laughs> let's get the award out and, oh, and see what we've got. Let's do the full Wow. Oh, it's a beautiful what? thing. Beautiful. Fantastic. There Fantastic. it is. It's like the Oscars. Brilliant. Oh, well, well yeah, done. Excellent. And Danny, can I just say yes. something to you? Yes. I'd like to thank you uh, and uh, your fellow judges um, for selecting the Morris Minor Owners Club for this accolade. Well done also to the other contenders for the award. And I'm glad that you mentioned them. Well done to them. I'm sure there are some impressive lockdown restorations to be unveiled in the coming months. While this accolade is important for the club as a whole, it's also fitting to acknowledge the work that we've, of the people we've just mentioned. Um, and also the professionals who assisted us and people who actually contributed parts or services to allow the restoration to be done. So thank you again for um, the recognition of what has been a real collective effort. And of course, we look forward to bringing the car to the 2022 Practical Classics Restoration Show to share with other enthusiasts the results of all the hard work. Right, we're now on to the Outstanding Club Magazine of the Year. Now, in this year when so many of us have spent so much time looking at screens, and yes, I know you're looking at one now, a club magazine has come as a breath of fresh air to so many people. A bit like a monthly magazine like Practical Classics or a weekly like Classic Car Weekly. Something we hold on to, a slice of normality in all the madness. 
so many clubs have had to modify the contents for their magazines, have had to slim down or, or perhaps put on pause things that they wanted to do. But one club, the winner this year, has really stood out as a club which has gone the extra mile to make sure that their magazine content is as good, if not better, than it's ever been before. The editor of this particular title himself contracted COVID. However, he still managed to get the magazine out on time every time, and the content was just as good as it always is. The magazine serves its club community like all good club magazines do. In fact, it's done it better. And this year, the outstanding club magazine of the year goes to the Standard Motor Club's Standard Car Review. And joining me here online is Peter Lockley, the president of the club, and Steve O'Hara, the editor of the magazine. Steve and Peter, welcome. Uh, Peter, firstly, what's it like having a really good club magazine to keep the club going? Good afternoon, Danny. It's uh, a delight, really, to uh, await the club magazine every month uh, to uh, see pictures of lots of members' cars, a bit of historical content, such as the story that we had in the latest one of uh, the old chairman of the company, Sir John Black's holiday home in Wales, which was a fascinating story that uh, I'd never heard about and had been written by one of our members, who is in fact his son. Uh, and uh, it was the most remarkable story. And there are lots of other tales that uh, come along about various cars that have say, disappeared and resurfaced and... Uh, found new homes and uh, so uh, all in all a delightful magazine. Okay Steve tell us the secret then because a lot of people have told me that the magazine's better than it's ever been despite well, having to be produced during these extraordinary lockdown conditions. How have you managed it? Well a number of things but the most important inevitably is having something to put in it. However stylish, however pretty the colours are, if there aren't articles to come in um, the magazine is worthless and I must admit about a year ago when we'd just gone into lockdown I was very concerned and I thought I might have to do the very worst thing that is photocopy old articles from old magazines mm. I need to worry because I think partly because the membership too were uh, locked down they had more time to work on their cars and uh, to submit very interesting articles brilliant uh, something that's, uh, that we felt too is that a lot of our uh, readers who've had to lock down themselves have been working on their classics at home. And so we've, we've had lots of good content as well. Tell us um, about the, the, the best thing that you've come across this year, the thing that you've been most proud of publishing. Mm, that's an interesting question. Well, that article that Peter Lockley mentioned from, our, um, from a member who was the son of Sir John Black, was certainly the most interesting. And uh, um, the, uh, the author, Nick Black, and I did some research together, which seemed to point that the former Standard and Standard Triumph chairman was a member of MI6 during the war. At least there were some strange coincidences which we couldn't explain. And I must admit, my rather vivid imagination perhaps filled in a few of the blanks. That's fantastic. Well, look, uh, from one classic car magazine editor to another, congratulations, Steve, and respect to you, mm. sir. Well done. Um, that is Peter, so kind of you. I, I believe I believe you uh, des are going to be accepting the award from me, so it's here in this box. So if uh, I hand this over to you, Peter, for you to accept. There you go. Fantastic. Congratulations to the Standard Motor Club uh, for Standard Car Review. Congratulations to Peter Lockley and, of course, to editor Steve O'Hara. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now we've completed the main awards. There's one more very special award that we'd like to give out uh, this evening, and that is your lockdown hero. Now, these awards have been nominated by you, by the clubs, and they have been nominated for people who've gone the extra mile, people who have really stepped up during this terrible time and been the people that everyone else at the club looks to, to provide positivity, to provide services, to look after others, to give more than they receive. People, the special people that really make clubs tick. 
we had lots of entries and all of them were magnificent for a whole bunch of reasons and uh, we would like to say to you all of you everyone who's been active in any way in any club in the whole of the country thank you thank you for keeping the clubs going during this time of crisis thank you for bringing people so much joy because let's face it we do it for fun and the clubs have been right at the center of all of that so thank you for your activity and thank you for your service as well special mentions go to chris allen from club triumph uh, he has stepped up in more ways than one uh, he's assisted in an ever-increasing number of deliveries he secured the loan of a fleet vehicle from peugeot and Vauxhall uh, via a contact in club triumph He's been delivering food and supplies to people, working six days a week through the worst of the lockdown, getting food to families in desperate need. Uh, and this despite his own health concerns. He is a true hero. The next special mention goes to Rod Smith and also to Pete and Lynn Pascoe from the Ford Cortina Mark II Owners Club. Uh, lockdown has given their spares team real difficulties in, in, in terms of operation. Uh, they've all fallen into COVID vulnerable groups, yet they've not only kept members supplied with parts they need, but they've also managed to keep up the progress in expanding the club's own spares scheme. They've added new lines over the last 12 months, completed manufacturing projects, and they've got many more underway. It's a fantastic commitment to serve the club and its members. So well done, Rod Smith, and well done to Pete and Lynn Pascoe. The next special mention goes to Mark Wells of the Gay Classic Car Group. And without drawing breath, he's coordinated press and publicity uh, and has got recognition for the club throughout the year. Uh, he's brought up some fantastic schemes, some superb club activities that have get people engaged throughout. And uh, he has also been a source of great knowledge and great support for club members as well. So that's Mark Wells of the Gay Classic Car Group. Well done to all of you. But the winner is a very special man. And sadly, this award has to be awarded to him posthumously. It's Richard Davis of the MR2 Drivers Club. Now, Richard has been an active member of the MR2 Drivers Club for many years. And he volunteered for countless roles, including events coordinator, newsletter editor, and regional rep. He was a regular attendee at the NEC shows, displaying his golf racing theme for Mark 1 MR2 and giving dream rides in it for the sporting bears. Now, from the start of the first lockdown, Richard and his wife, Sue, who is with us this evening, volunteered with the Chase Coronavirus Support Network to help vulnerable people with shopping, collecting prescriptions, dog walking, phone calls. They made thousands of visors, face masks, scrubs and gowns, and they delivered them to the local GP surgeries and to local care homes. They sold masks to raise funds for the local food bank and for their local church. Sadly uh, and tragically, both Richard and Sue contracted COVID-19. And although Sue recovered, Richard sadly lost his battle with the disease in November 2020. Now, the judges unanimously agreed that Richard's wife should be presented with this award as a fitting tribute for Richard's recent COVID-19 volunteer work and the years of loyal service to the MR2 Drivers Club. And as a true classic car enthusiast, his selflessness and his devotion to others was inextricably linked with the classic car club that he loved and served so well. And in the most tragic of circumstances, he ended up falling victim to the pandemic. He spent so much time and effort to help others through. And we hope that his wife Sue will take some solace from this recognition from the National Car Club Award judges, uh, and also from the whole historic vehicle community. Richard is the definition of a lockdown hero, and may he rest in peace. So um, I would like to say thank you to Richard, and congratulations to Richard as well, posthumously. Um, we have from the club, club director, Darren Letts, and we also have with us uh, Richard's wife, Sue, uh, who's joined us this evening. Uh, first, Darren, let, let me ask, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, Richard from a club perspective? Uh, well, Richard, he always put himself forward for any volunteer roles that people are asking for. Um, it's, as anyone who's done it will know, it can be a thankless task, but he was always enthusiastic in putting himself forward for things. Uh, the newsletter was always one of the uh, hard ones to keep on top of, and people sort of expect it, but he kept on doing it, and 
it was always well received. Um, and his enthusiasm in the club as well for the events he always attended, particularly at the NEC. He had his car on show many a time at the NEC and then moved on to doing the dream rides, like you say. So it just embodies what Richard was all about. He, he just loved the car scene, so loved doing stuff for other people. And uh, that just went through to doing it with the sporting bears as well and to raising the money with those. So yeah. great guy to know. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, Salt of the Earth Man, who sounds like a great man. I'm, I'm just sorry I never met him myself. Um, Sue, uh, you've got the award there. I can see it behind you. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What do you think Richard would have thought of it? Um, he probably would have wanted about all the fuss was about. Um, he took on tasks and did the voluntary work for other people, not for what rewards he was going to get. Um, he was very kind, very generous. He liked to help other people. Um, he was always on the go. He enjoyed his cars um, very, very much. And I know he really enjoyed his time with the MR2 Drivers Club, as I did and hopefully will, even though we no longer have an MR2. We've moved on to other vehicles. Um, but the, the, the rewards, a very, very nice surprise. And his family will be very, very proud of him, as am I. Well, just want to send our, um, our heartfelt love and our thoughts and our prayers are with you and your family and with the MR2 Drivers Club. We hope that this has given you some solace at a terrible, terrible time. And um, I just want to make sure that, you know, Richard is remembered and that uh, he is acknowledged as well, because it's people like him that make this movement what it is, a wonderful place to be. So thank you both very much. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and, and for agreeing to join us, join us soon. It must be tough but it's great that you're here. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you. Well, that was emotional, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the National Car Club Awards this year, supported by Practical Classics, Classic Car Weekly, and the Federation of British Historic Vehicle Clubs. It's been an amazing award ceremony. It's been an extraordinary and challenging year for everybody. So thanks to all of you for keeping it going, keeping your clubs going, keeping your cars going, keeping the faith. I'd like at this point finally to have a few honourable mentions so people who've made a real difference this year but we haven't managed to acknowledge in the awards themselves. I'd like to acknowledge Nick Chivers uh, for Classics for Carers, the National Stay at Home car show. He's raised money for charity this year and we've all enjoyed parking our classics on the drive so our neighbours can have a look. So thanks Nick, brilliant idea, beautifully rolled out. Uh, Adam Gompertz, uh, Revs a Limiter. Uh, he is an extraordinary man. He's brought the classic car community together online and raised some money for uh, Mission Motorsport as well. Uh, he is our reverend and we are his parish. Thanks, Adam. Well, I'd like to thank also Sporting Bears, who's done, as ever, an enormous amount for charity this year too. And as for people that we've lost this year, well, there's some headliners, Murray Walker, Sabine Schmidt, but also Derek Pollock and Dave Shuri from Club Triumph who will be sorely missed, two titans in one club gone in a single year, and uh, they will be really missed by the people who knew and loved them. May they all rest in peace. Our thoughts are with them and their families. Our thoughts are also with you. So let's see if we can make the rest of 2021 really sing. And let's look forward to next year when we can get together again in one room to celebrate the National Car Club Awards 2022. I will see you there.